Archetypes are the pillars of combat in Metaphor Re Fantasia, and there is a plethora of options and strategies you can utilize the more archetypes you have. That being said, in order to get these archetypes, you'll need to level them up individually for every single one. Money is also very important as all your items, cooking ingredients, powerful accessories and super powerful igniters cost a lot of money. Now, leveling archetypes and getting money can be very tedious, but in today's video, I'll give you some amazing tips in order to do both very fast. Now I already have some farm guides for particular areas in the game which you can check out in the description below, but this video is more about overall tips and other in-game mechanics that can speed this process up. Also. This video may contain minor spoilers for follower bonds and some archetypes, but definitely no story spoilers. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Metaphor Repentasia content. Okay, let's get into it. First, let's go through some must-have followers. Firstly, it's Brigida. Now, Brigida is basically the inheritor of the merchant archetype and you can arc her pretty early on in the game through the Belega Corridor. There's plenty of videos online about how to do that. And there's also a video on my channel as well that you can check out below. And the reason why you want her is, again, she is the heritor of the Merchant Archetype. And the Merchant Archetype is great because it has the special ability of Alchemy, which is a hero passive only exclusive to the protagonist, and it's basically just for overall combat. So it's, essentially, it's a chance of winning a small sum of money each time an enemy is stunned or defeated in overall combat. And trust me, guys, this, this, this archetype is purely amazing for farming money, especially because essentially every time you defeat an enemy in overall combat, you just get double the amount of money. And it's just, it's, yeah, you just get an insane amount of money over a very short period of time. And the reason why you want to level up Brigida is for her rank up passive or her rank up ability guild discount. And this way you can receive discounts on weapon, armor, and igniter shops. Now this discount is about 20%, which is definitely significant, especially for those end game uh, igniters in the igniter shop. And this actually stacks with the additional 20% on idle stay for a total of 40% of items from those shops. When you get her rank seven passive, she does have igniter connoisseur, which basically offers a wider range of igniters. And some of those igniters are actually very, very good with very, very powerful late game abilities. Now another follower that you want to rank up is definitely Maria. Now Maria actually has a lot of good rank up abilities. Obviously she is also the inheritor of the healer archetype which has some amazing late game healing abilities like Medical, Penpatra and has also got Harmodyne for that amazing light attack. And then basically what you want her for is the Herpes rank up bond which increases post battle XP. You also want her for speed cooking which I'll do in another video later. Basically time will not lapse when you cook on the Gauntlet Runner which is amazing. And then when you rank her up to rank 7, she gets Burning Purpose, which significantly increases the post-battle XP. So definitely those two are worth it in that regard for Maria. Now once you have these follower bonds, there is an item that can further increase the Archetype EXP or AXP after battles, and that is the Archetypal Ring. To get the Archetypal Ring, you'll need to come to the Accessory Merchant in Brailhaven. He is located next to the meat vendors and on the same strip as the main shops and the recruitment center. This merchant sells a new accessory every day, but for the Archetypal Ring, you'll need to visit him on Water's Day. The ring costs 40k and you can buy as many as you want, one for each party member. This merchant also has some great accessories so definitely visit him on other days to see what else he has in store. The ring gives 50% more archetype EXP post battle but there are a few caveats you should know. The 50% bonus is applied to whoever in your party is wearing the ring which is why I recommend buying multiple of these. The bonus EXP only shows on the post battle screen if the MC is wearing the ring. However, if the MC is not wearing the ring and the other party members are, they will still get the bonus, it just won't show on the screen. Now this could be a glitch, um, not too sure about that one, but at this point in time, not sure. However, it definitely does work if your other party members have it and your MC does not. This passive unfortunately does not work on overall combat, only on squad battles. But this is fine because in a dungeon, squad battles give more EXP and AXP anyway than overworld combat, but obviously take longer. So my tip would be to use all your MP on squad battles, and then once all your MP is depleted, then just go back to overworld combat one shooting enemies to get that overall EXP. Now let's talk a little bit about archetype mastery and how it works. So every archetype has a certain amount of AXP required. The higher the heroic embodiment of the lineage, i.e. heroic warrior, adept swordmaster, or even the elite samurai, the more AXP you'll need to rank up. But once you rank up an archetype to master, firstly you'll get a unique stat bonus for the particular lineage. So for example, for the mage, you get actually plus 20 MP when you rank master the mage. And then every time you rank up beyond master, you'll get a hero's leave a lot. These give your archetypes 1000 AXP and is a must have when you don't want to farm too much and just need to quickly get an ability to inherit 
or unlock the higher tier archetypes. There is a farm later on in the game that gives you an even better item for AEXP, which are the jeweled roots. Now I have a video on that on my channel, so definitely subscribe and stay tuned. Also, you can even buy seeds to grow these items, so you should really have an abundance of these sooner or later. Heroical level 1 archetypes are usually the easiest to rank up, so I usually don't use the leaves on them, and save them for the adept and elites, which do take a lot of EXP. Now for some farming tips. Red crystals in dungeons are a must. There are a bunch of them throughout the game, and anytime there are some, I would highly recommend to farm them. This is particularly good in the early game, because early game EXP and with early, any early game in SMT and Persona games, it is very difficult to get through especially on the harder difficulties. Now, why red crystals are good is because they're usually close to save points and save rooms. They indefinitely spawn the enemies, and when you put the game on easy, you can one-shot them pretty much every time. So here's how I would set up to farm both money and AEXP. I would equip all party members with the archetypal ring, if you have it, and go and fight all the enemies until I have no more MP. Obviously, I do recommend probably beating the dungeon boss um, before you actually start this, just in case you run out of MP and you can't even beat the dungeon. So definitely do that beforehand and then come back and farm. Now, after you deplete your MP, you can continue this, of course, with auto attacks as well as HP draining attacks from the Brawler lineage um, or auto battles, but you can't necessarily guarantee this will be effective and you may not defeat all the enemies as well, especially if they're resistant to physical damage. You, obviously, this will definitely work, but it, you know you, you might not have a lot of HP items to keep yourself sustained, so definitely do that at your own risk. So once your MP is depleted, you will then equip the Merchant Archetype with your Hero Passive on the MC. I'll also recommend equipping Lucky Find from the Passive, which increases the likelihood of receiving items after battles by 20% on all your party members, just to get that additional boost. You know, you may as well get items while you're farming money and XP, right? and then go to town on the red crystal enemies when they infinitely spawn in the overworld. Now you can either equip the archetypes you want to level up on your party members, or just equip a lower tier archetype that is mastered, that way you will be getting a lot of leaves of light as well as farming normal EXP as well. And this all goes towards using all your EXP items on your adept and heroic archetypes, which trust me guys, definitely do take a long time to level up. And while this is happening, you are also getting a crap ton of money from the alchemy hero passive. And you can use that money to spend on all the cool accessories and all the cool late game accessories that are super super powerful. Now don't get me wrong, you can also definitely equip just the archetypes that you want to level. You don't have to do the master archetypes to get the leaves, you can definitely just rank up normal archetypes. But I definitely do recommend that you do keep the merchant archetype on the MC just for the additional money. That way you're just killing two birds with one stone, it's just more efficient. So thanks for watching everyone, that is my ultimate farming guide for Metaphor Re Fantasio. Obviously when you get to the later, later stages of the game and then into New Game Plus, there is definitely more and better ways of farming. However, this is definitely a good way to even just to get to that point, especially if you're playing on the harder difficulties. This will work on any difficulty however, and it will definitely speed up your process to try and get all your archetypes mastered to get that sweet, sweet trophy, as well as just to see amazing, amazing abilities from all these beautiful archetypes. So once again, if you enjoyed, definitely leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more metaphor. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.